We all know Big Buff is not thrilled with what's happening in the economy right now. I mean, if Mr. Warren can't make it to Dairy Queen like he likes to, he knows there's something wrong. And we've beaten his opinion on the market to death on this channel. We know he's at least short to intermediate term bearish. So once we know that, the next question is what can we learn from what he does and how he executes his strategy? Because regardless of all the haters that come up every 10 years saying, oh, Buffett has lost it, I think we all know he's gonna make it through just fine. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of his advice of what to do in this type of situation. And if you want to learn more about how we apply Buffett's strategies to the market, then check out this free training. There's a link in this video and down below in the description and comments. It goes over the strategy that I use and a lot of our fallible members use as well. And no, it's not value investing, but you'll see that it uses a lot of Buffett's principles. Now, one of the big themes that has been in the news lately has been the death of value. Here it says valuation, but what they're talking about is value investing in general. And the reason they've been saying that is because growth stocks, as you can see here on the right side of this chart, have vastly outperformed value in the last few years. So what are they gonna say? Oh, value must be dead, it must not work anymore. And along with that, oh, if value's dead, then Buffett must be nearly dead too, apart from his age. I don't, I don't mean he's dying, but dead as in not effective in the market anymore. And like I said before, this happens at least every 10 years. In every cycle, the news articles start coming out. Has Buffett lost it? And you know how much everybody was making fun of him with the airline sell-off. He sold right at the bottom. So everyone, you know, most of them being short-term things, said, wow, what an idiot. But Buffett being Buffett and having billions clogging up his ears just ignored all of that and stuck to his strategy. Regardless if people think value is dead, he's a value investor. And you can see the same type of thing happened in 1967. Warren Buffett, he told investors that he was out of step with the present conditions. He admitted it himself. But he said, I will not abandon a previous approach whose logic I understand, although I find it difficult to apply. Even though it may mean foregoing large and apparently easy profits to embrace an approach which I don't fully understand, have not practiced successfully and which possibly could lead to substantial permanent loss of capital. I don't know what's going on with this quote right here. It looks like they just put commas wherever they wanted, but the point is that he's gonna stick to what he knows because he also knows that that strategy works. Any type of strategy, regardless of which one you're using, is gonna go through cycles. So there's gonna be some market periods where it's gonna work much better than in other market periods. There's no strategy that works perfectly well regardless of the market conditions. That just doesn't exist. There's absolutely Absolutely gonna be bad periods. And during those bad periods, you're gonna look at these other strategies and be like, wow, it's performing so well. What's wrong with mine? Which is what Buffett was talking about here, foregoing those large and apparently easy profits. Because the grass is always greener, right? Applies in life, applies in investing too. But what you gotta remember is that you're not just applying this strategy during this smaller period of time. You're trying to apply it over the full cycle. So another quote that Buffett said was, do not take yearly results too seriously. Instead, focus on four or five year averages. And again, what he's talking about here is that full cycle. Any strategy could have a bad year. It happens. And of course, when I'm talking about this, it depends on what type of strategy you're using because each strategy, depending on the time frame, has different lengths of cycles. So if you're a day trader, then your full cycle might be just one month. If you're a longer term investor, then it might be four or five years. Not saying that one is more profitable than the other, but they do work differently because you're going after different size trends in the market. But again, regardless of your time frame, there's going to be those periods of underperformance, but that that doesn't mean that you switch your strategy because then you run into that problem where you're just constantly switching over and over again and you never have just one thing that you're executing and then what usually happens is that you switch the strategy that has been working because you saw it was popular but right as you're switching to it that's when it starts underperforming again so you go on this never-ending cycle of being just one step behind the market and if that sounds familiar and then yeah it's the same thing that happens in stocks when you have FOMO and you try to jump in you jump in too late as soon as you get in the thing crashes same thing with strategies that's why you stick to the one that you have, assuming of course that it has that positive edge over that full cycle. So this is exactly what Buffett did with airlines, right? He sold, everyone made fun of him, he didn't care. And then what, a few months later, he's killing it with Apple. But did his strategy change between what happened with airlines and what happened with Apple? No, he's still doing what Buffett does. He's still successfully executing on each investment, one after another. And he's not just throwing away his strategy because one investment didn't work out. That's the worst thing you can do is expect a 100% win rate and for everything to work all the time. That's not how markets work. You're always going to have losers. So you'll see right now that crypto is becoming popular again because it's moving. And what, for the last few months, stocks have been super popular. So you're going to see a bunch of people jump from stocks into crypto trying to chase the next big thing. But whatever strategy they were using for stocks may not work for crypto if they're using any strategy at all. Would Buffett ever do something like that? No. And that's part of the reason why he's so successful. So I can even show you in this strategy that we talk about in this training. Right now, it's up almost 50%. 
10%. It's been a good year, but that doesn't mean that every single year is good. You can see back here in 2012, the NASDAQ, which is what I benchmark against, was up almost 17%, where our strategy was down 3%. So if you look at that one year, it looks like a terrible strategy, doesn't it? But if you only looked at it for that one year, you're not really doing that full cycle methodology because the very next year, that strategy made almost 90%, where the market only made 35. So really what you wanna look at is that full cycle over multiple years. And when you do that, you see that this particular strategy is up almost 2000% since 2008 versus the NASDAQ, which is up only 524%. So it's way outperforming over that full cycle. And again, I'm just using my strategy as an example because I have all the stats. But one of the most important things in this strategy and any strategy is what it can do in a crisis like 2008. So you can see in 2008, the Qs were down 31%, but ours was down only 7.2%. And the reason why is because the risk control is so solid, which brings us to another Buffett lesson, risk control. What's that quote of his? Rule number one is never lose money. Rule number two is never forget rule number one. Every single one of the greatest investors always talks about this nonstop. It's the number one thing they talk about, risk control. And then tied or number two is psychology because those pretty much go actually hand in hand. But one of the most important things you could do for your long-term returns is to cut off that tail risk. So cut off that big drop that everyone else faces. Like in 2008, what I was just showing you here, you're way better off losing 7% versus losing 31%. So take an extreme example. Say your average investor lost 50% of their portfolio in a crash. Well, to make that money back, how much of a return do you need? It's not 50%. All of a sudden you need 100% just to get back to break even. But what if you lose 10% instead of 50%? How much does it take to get back to break even? It's not double again. It's not 20%. It's just 11%. So how much faster is the guy with better risk control going to get back to zero and then earning profits again versus the other guy who now has to double their portfolio just to break even? The first guy with the risk control is much better off. I can show you my own equity curve this year of my personal portfolio using the strategy that I'm talking about. The green line is my portfolio and the blue line is the NASDAQ. And these are equity curves, meaning how much the portfolio is up. And you can see during the March period what happened. The NASDAQ took a dip because of the whole CCPV crash. But my portfolio, yeah, it took a dip, but you see it flattened out. It didn't keep going down like the NASDAQ did. And that's because we were managing our risk. We were selling our positions. We were collecting cash. We were getting ready for the next move up. So when the next move up did come, the Qs, the NASDAQ was starting all the way down here, more than negative 20%, where us, because we cut off our risk, we were starting way up here. So while the NASDAQ had to climb all of this, we had to climb just this much. We were already positive and we were ready to make more money. That's how we're able to be up almost 50%, where the rest of the market is up less than 30%. And if you keep doing that year after year, cutting off those downsides, you can see how the long-term equity curve, it really starts to separate. This red line is the Qs again. This blue line is our strategy. Huge difference. And no one likes to talk about risk control because it's not really something that's fun. Who wants to think about the downside? And the really big downside only comes once in a while. It's like once every 10 years, maybe for the big, big crisis. So as I mentioned before, we're naturally not long-term thinkers as humans. So no one wants to constantly keep reminding themselves, oh, but there could be another crash. But the best investors like Buffett, what they are more than investors is risk managers. Like he said, rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. It's always at the front of their mind. It doesn't prevent them from making money by not making moves because they're so scared of a crash, but it does constantly remind them every day, hey, I need to protect my downside. Hey, if my position hit this risk point where I'm supposed to sell it, I better sell it, even though I feel like the market's gonna come back because they're keeping that crash in their head. So Buffett has a few great quotes on dealing with losing investments. He said, should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. I don't know what type of life you're living if you're finding yourself in leaking boats and holes. But the point is, cut your losses. Always manage that risk. That's the only way you're going to have success over the long term in the market. And it doesn't take a genius to do that. It really just takes more emotional control than the next guy because the market is just there to manipulate your emotions. So your job, apart from risk control, like I mentioned before, is controlling your psychology. So keeping yourself from falling for each of the traps that the market lays out every single day. So like Buffett said, the most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd 
crowd or against the crowd. Success in investing does not correlate with IQ. What you need is the temperament to control the urges that get other people into trouble in investing. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with the 130 IQ, thankfully. And this is an important one right here. How good are you at just listening to yourself instead of the crowd? And this once again can go back to the crypto example, because I'm already seeing so much chatter about everyone getting into crypto again. But if you don't have a strategy for crypto, then you should probably stay out, right? Unless you're going to put in the work to develop one. So even me, I get made fun of for not jumping into crypto. I could tell a person, hey, I'm up 50% in stocks. I'm good on crypto. I'm going to stick to what I know in the stock market with this specific strategy that I want to execute. And that's okay if I'm missing out on something over here, because there's always going to be something over there, right? Still going to get made fun of, no doubt. AK, hey, you're an idiot. You should definitely be in the crypto space. I'm sure you guys have gotten that too from people. And again, I'm not saying crypto isn't a good market to trade. It's actually one of the best markets to trade, but I personally don't have a specific strategy for it. If I want to develop it, that's one thing. But if I want to stick to the strategy that I already have, nothing wrong with that either. So it's really important to separate yourself from that crowd mentality and think for yourself. Important in markets and important in life too. Do what you want to do, not what you're pressured to do. Goes back to what we start out with in this video. Buffett wants to stick to the previous approach he understands versus going after those supposedly easy profits. In that other market or that other stock, it's always going to be something. Grass is always greener. There's always going to be the temptation. So again, if you want to learn how we specifically do it using Buffett's principles, then check out this free training. It'll show you how we work our strategy. There's a link in this video and down below in the description and comments. And if you like this video and you want more lessons from Buffett that you can actually use, then make sure you subscribe. Do that and I'll see you in the next one. Stay foul out there. Bye.